First of all, in terms of governing council, we had very um, intense discussions about the current economic situation, about the outlook, about the uncertainty. And as with most institutions, communities, families, and probably you all, the war of Russia against Ukraine has tainted and overshadowed a lot of those discussions. There were different views around the table in all directions. But after those good discussions, there was a determination by all governing council members to rally the proposal that was put together by the executive board and presented by our chief economist. It takes a balanced approach. It delivers on the mandate that we have, which, as you know, is price stability in the face of what we are seeing. So your second question related to accelerating normalization. That was not the decision that was made today. The decision that was made was to progress step by step, to acknowledge the added uncertainty that we are facing, and to therefore have added optionalities so that we can, in all circumstances, respond in an agile way. You will have noted that our decision in relation to asset um, purchases under the APP is conditional and clearly states that we have a declining pace of purchase for Q2 and that for Q3, if the outlook for medium-term inflation is confirmed that by the data, we will indeed end asset purchases. But if, on the other hand, the data, which are critically important because we are data dependent in our decisions, do not support this medium-term outlook as we see it now, then we indicate very clearly in the monetary policy statement that I have just read that the Governing Council stands ready to revise both in terms of timeline and in terms of volume, its purchases. So it is a conditional uh, provision that you see in our decision. And we are not in any way accelerating. This was in line with our December meeting, with our February meeting and press conference. And what we are doing is confirming our step-by-step -step approach, our maximum optionalities in the face of maximum uncertainty, but also delivering on our mandate, which is price stability. The medium-term inflation outlook, both in the baseline delivered by staff and in the scenarios that you will see tomorrow in details, which are all, of course, a worsening of the situation. There is not a positive and a negative, they're both more negative. But in all those baseline and two scenarios, the medium-term inflation outlook arrives roughly at target. I think in terms of um, optionalities, um, I mean, I'll be happy to expand a little bit because this is clearly what has guided us. Added uncertainty, added optionalities. So what are we doing? We are clearly identifying the pace. We are procuring a situation where we can decide sometime after net asset purchases what decision we should make in relation to rates. In terms of timeline, we're also saying that we will end net asset purchases under those data that I have just described in the course of Q3. Q3 is three months. So we tried to have as much optionality in order to deal with the situation. I have underlined in my response to you 
sometime after, which is a substitute to shortly before. And obviously, sometime after is an open time horizon, which will be data dependent. The occurrence of which will be data dependent. I think that was your third question sometime. I think I have explained it with this response. I hope so. <laughs>